Hello guys and welcome everyone to another painting with streaming with Vital Creatives. My name is Ruben Martinez and I'll be with you as usual on Monday in the next following, following hour. Uh, continue with the process of the Green Knight from this kickstarter uh, called Echoes of Camelot. Uh, probably most of you you already know about this Kickstarter, but in case not, uh, I could commend you that uh, this little intro and the the miniatures that I'll go to show you are from the last Kickstarter that Big Child Creative have launched. Uh, a couple of weeks be, uh, ago so is all about the King Arthur legends as you could see and those are the characters already unlocked in the campaign okay you could see some well-known uh, characters like Morgana, Serkai, Lancelot, Merlin okay and so on so Mainly, this is what you could get in this campaign, and as well, you could obtain some complements for these miniatures from uh, from for uh, seventy millimeters uh, and a scale for collectors and and painters, of course, and these plinths and add-ons for the plinths and the base uh, you could obtain as well in this campaign you could uh, pledge all in one <laughs> okay this is the the bread and butter of the campaign i think because you could get all of this stuff all the miniatures that you could see only for this prize, this is a special prize for our backers from Kickstarter. So the the, the value in retail, uh, you could see that is way higher. Okay, so I could say to you that don't miss the chance to get all of these miniatures and his special pieces that will only be available in this Kickstarter as well. You could see some some extra pieces in the in the updates of the campaign, and uh, you could add to your pledge some special items uh, like uh, the, the the Chimera Colors paint set, okay, or the Painting Secrets for Fantasy Figures. This is a publication full of tutorials about painting fantasy uh, miniatures <coughs> that we released uh, some months ago with Amo of Mi Jimene and uh, we recently unlocked the, the special art book for, of this project, okay? You could find inside this art book uh, plenty of, of pictures and process about how we need made this this Kickstarter for you. So let me let me check the the updates in order to see and show you better said the latest unlocked items. This is what what I talked about the scenery kit. Okay, you could uh, add these pieces to to your miniatures and will fit in a scale and thematic of course with the king Arthur legend you could see the Scalibur uh, sword and some items like like the Grial and etc will complement uh, perfectly your miniatures okay so this is one of the updates and you could add as many as you want, but I must remember that only one of these are included in the in the Knights of the Round Table uh, pledge. Okay. 
uh, the next update I want to show you is this is like a summary I I'll always <coughs> love to do these kind of things in order to show you the, the news probably you already know this this news but anyways <laughs> sometimes there someone that didn't um, didn't know this kind of things so, okay this is the the book card uh, that I'm commenting about and you could find inside some some painting articles about the the official art box of the of the the miniature from the Kickstarter and you will see some interesting uh, division of the different painters uh, in this project like Krzysztof Kowalski, um, Mikhail Pisarski, Arnaud Lazaro, etc. etc. So you could see uh, his own very own approach to these miniatures, okay? And as well you could find inside <coughs> some uh, some tutorial uh, about sculpting uh, the process of some of the miniatures and inside of this book art book you will you will of course find the the complete gallery of the project okay so you you'll have all all the pictures that you are seeing in in this campaign but uh, beautiful with a beautiful layout and <coughs> uh, in, in only one place okay so this is another thing that have been unlocked and the the previous the previous update was an already a miniature that was unlocked before but uh, we we didn't have the time to show you properly okay so this is the king's arthur miniature who is the king of this project okay so sorry for for the waiting you unlock everything so fast <laughs> so we didn't have the time but finally you could see this beautiful, this beautiful miniature created by Pedro Núñez and sculpted by Hugo Gomez Briones okay so here you have the latest uh, uh, updates and of course stay tuned because many surprises left until the end of this campaign that I want to to remember you is is live until this Friday if I don't wrong so stay tuned because as I said you before many surprises we are still to come okay so i think uh, now you could see see me okay perfect so i hope you like the the news <laughs> and the the other ones that will come I hope that will be of your likings as well. Okay, hello to everyone again. I'm reading your comments as always. So uh, ask whatever you want and let's chat and paint for this hour of live streaming. I see a lot of people that every day is with us. So thank you to be there once again hello Sacha que tal Miguel <laughs> mucho calor Ay. hola Ricardo que tal Renier hola buenas tardes hello mini paint Ruby que tal como andas otro día más ahí muy bien me alegro de verte A ver, um, uh, antes de que se me olvide, 
Muchas gracias, Ruby. Está diciendo que, que le ha encantado mi, mi figura de, de Sir Kai. Eh, la verdad es que se pinta muy, muy bien esa figura. Eh, Natalia y Pedro han hecho un trabajo de diseño y escultura espectacular y yo creo que, que lo vais a disfrutar bastante. Es de las más sencillas, además que hay en el Kickstarter, porque luego, como podréis ver, hay otras figuras un poco más enrevesadas y complicadas, como pueda ser esta del Caballero Verde, pero la verdad es que son figuras muy bien definidas, muy bien detalladas, eh, no lo digo por decir, eh, habéis podido ver en estos dos días de live streaming que he estado haciendo con vosotros cómo he eh, avanzado la, la miniatura y, y hombre, la verdad es que en, en, en una hora de tiempo no me, no me va a dar a hacer mucho más de lo que habéis podido ver, pero ya por lo menos vais viendo un poco cómo, cómo quitaros el miedo en estas figuras que lo que hay que hacer es, es echarle la pintura encima y, y lo que siempre digo, ir, ir disfrutándolas, ir corrigiendo, ir viendo que queda bien, que no, ir disfrutando del proceso y poco a poco ya veis que, que al final, eh, pues porque no vamos a poder hacer muchos live streaming más de, de esta serie de... De, de Ecos of Camelot porque el viernes que viene ya se acaba la campaña pero si llego a estar cinco live streaming más con vosotros a lo mejor me daba tiempo a pintar la entera <risa> no, no, no es broma, es broma <risa> hay que echarles mucho mimo y, y dedicación a esta figura si queremos que queden bien eh, muchas veces el secreto de, de que es, como tantas cosas ¿no? en, en la vida, es echarle mimo y, y dedicación. Entonces, no tengáis prisa por acabar vuestras figuras, eh, echarlas el tiempo que haga falta, y seguro que en cada una vais aprendiendo alguna cosa que luego podréis poner en práctica para la siguiente. Es muy importante, y siempre lo digo, eh, que acabéis las figuras. Eh, si tenéis muchas en, en la mesa de casa, ahí a medias y sin terminar, eh, darlas una oportunidad e irlas acabando, porque... Realmente no se aprende empezando figuras, sino como se aprende rematándolas. Eh, y no importa. Eh, si no has quedado contento, luego no vuelvas y la retoques a los cinco meses porque has aprendido algo nuevo. Déjala ahí porque al fin y al cabo es un trabajo que, que ya has hecho y, y hasta te puede valer como de, de copia de seguridad, ¿no? Para cuando quieras volver a, a ver qué hice hace un año. Y cuando te veas la comparación verás todo lo que has mejorado gracias a, a, ese, a, es, a esas tardes de, de disfrute pinturil que le has echado. Eh, y es que es así, no hay mucho más secreto. Eh... Ok, eh, Ruby está preguntando que si el libro solo saldrá en inglés. Eh, pues de momento no sabemos todavía si si vamos a hacer el, el tema del PDF, eh, traducciones al castellano y demás. De todas formas, eh, pensad que también es un, un, libro, un libro de arte en el que es como, más o menos, para que os hagáis la idea, es como un making of, ¿vale? Eh, también habrá tutoriales de pintura, pero van a ser tutoriales de pintura bastante específicos sobre eh, cada artista que ha participado en el proyecto. Eh, y será en gran parte muy visual entonces de momento ojalá lo pudiéramos sacar en, en, todas, en todos los idiomas a ser posible lo que pasa es que es cierto que, que ya no depende de nosotros porque las imprentas es verdad que requieren unas tiradas mínimas y al final eh, se hace imposible el, tener, el poder sacarlo en, en tantos idiomas es verdad que por gustarnos nos hubiera gustado sacarlo hasta en japonés pero bueno, eh, respecto a lo del PDF, eh, también es verdad que, que tendréis noticias en las actualizaciones, eh, así que no os preocupéis, porque eh, estamos trabajando justo, justo ahora en ello, estamos desarrollando todos estos materiales ahora para vosotros, y bueno, pues de todas formas, ya os digo, todo lo que, que sea nuevo, lo, lo tendréis, eh, seréis los primeros en enteraros, ¿sí? y más vosotros además que, que estáis dentro de la campaña. Hola María, ¿qué tal? 
No sé si eres la hermana de Hugo, pero vaya manitas tiene tu hermano. <ríe> He enseñado hace poco la, la, la figura de Arturo que, que, ha hecho, que ha hecho hace poco, la última, y, y es espectacular. Eh, ¿Qué tal, Isra? Bienvenido, otro día más. Ok, so... Eh, Let's start with the with the painting. So as you probably um, could see, this is a a very different version of the Green Knight of the campaign. So I wanted to 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 apply different color scheme. Okay, this is he's called the, the Green Knight, um, and you could find the the art from Pedro Núñez that he he designed it for the campaign is obviously obviously in green tones and huge so i was thinking about why not to change the the season of of the forest okay so uh, you could find some forests in autumn that have this kind of color so i think this is a pretty different and cool version so Uh, I will continue making uh, painting and defining some parts. In the previous live streaming, I was uh, making some uh, some quick sketches uh, in the over all the the piece. Okay, as you could remember, uh, if you don't if you didn't saw it, you could find this video uh, in the YouTube channel from Pizza Creative. So don't forget to check and. Uh, And like and subscribe this channel in order to continue generating these contents for you. Okay, so you could see the previous steps, uh, the sketching part that is so funny. And in this sketch, you could find and um, you could, you could create the the initial uh, over um, the the initial um, scheme for 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 your piece and. Uh, see what what will happen at the end so of course needs to be very uh, needs to be refined and needs a uh, lot of work until the, the the piece is finished okay but uh, in the second live streaming i started to apply more render and more definition on on, on the helmet and you could see that this part is is obviously more um, <coughs> more uh, contrast than other parts. I, I did a, a special texture and a strange te texture of a good metallic, uh, some kind of, this kind of material, okay? Something in between. So in this video you could see how to uh, change a good mat a good material from, uh, from the good to the metal, adding more contrast, okay? You could see this reflection is is painted is painted with very light color, but this is the the key to to make um, this part looks like metallic. Okay, so these kind of tricks are used a lot in painting miniatures, simulating uh, the different uh, materials of the different parts, <clears throat> and this this miniature is very tricky in this way because it is something in between uh, a met full metal armor mixing with some parts of wooden uh, plates and it's something strange but you could play and, and do whatever you want with this kind of textures and materials okay so for uh, remember uh, that uh, as i said in the previous live stream that is all about uh, making different levels of contrast, okay? So, for today, I think that would be very interesting to uh, make something the same that I did in the helmet, but this time uh, maybe in the in the shield, okay? This is a, a piece of the miniature that has some metal parts, some some wooden parts, and could be, could be nice in order to to apply some some reflections some special effects some rust and so on okay uh, it's important i paint the 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 first sketch of the miniature 
uh, with all the miniature mounted, okay? Uh, every piece is, is not in glue, okay? But uh, for me, it's a way very easy to see the wall piece at once, okay? So I could uh, place the lights and the shadows correctly, okay? Uh, painting the, the pieces separately uh, without any sketch of light and shadows uh, could be very tricky in order to uh, place the lights and the shadows correctly. But now I have this quick sketch so I could separate this piece, for example. Okay, I glued to, to, the, to the miniature with a little bit of blue tack. Okay. So, I could take apart this piece and glue onto this holder, it's, it's okay for me, and as you could see, now it's very easy for me to read to the different parts of the, of the shield, okay? So, the only thing I need to keep in mind is to... to uh, respect the the coherence of the light and the shadow you could see this side of the seal is very dark okay this is why the the seal onto the miniature is facing down the floor okay more or less in in this way so a little bit of light will reach to this side of the of the seal okay and the 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 the, the side of the seal facing the light could be all of these sides, the edge of the seal, the, the, the good parts, okay, will be with more light than these parts, okay. Of course, I'll paint some light, but this will be some weak light, okay, because this part is mainly in shadows. Okay, this is something like a summary, okay. Uh, to understand better the, the following uh, steps. Hola, Ricardo. A ver, una pregunta. Dice, <coughs> ¿cómo afecta la piratería a Bitchai? Porque Raúl tuvo que cerrar su página web y ya no vende sus propias creaciones a ese nivel. Eh, claro, claro que nos afecta a todos. <coughs> ¿Y cómo lo pueden afrontar? La verdad es que el tema de lo de la piratería es, es ya os podéis imaginar, eh, que es, es bastante grave y nos afecta a todos. Eh, no te creas que a nosotros no nos afecta. Eh, Raúl es verdad que estuvo muchos años en el mundo de las miniaturas y, y abrió muchas puertas, eh, aguantó, aguantó mucho, hasta que al final probablemente ya por temas de números y tal... Ya lo desconozco, pero me lo puedo imaginar que tendría que cerrar la, la marca que, que, que tenía en, el, en, en esta última temporada de su carrera. Entonces, eh, la verdad es que es una lástima porque eh, es verdad que en el caso concreto de Raúl, además, que es uno de los, de los miniaturistas que, que tanto como escultor como, como, como pintor, pues más eh, he seguido y... Y la verdad es que ha sido una gran influencia, yo creo que para todos los que por lo menos estamos en España seguro, porque le conocemos bien. Eh, y la verdad es que es una pena, eh, al final, eh, que una persona de, de esa calidad no pueda mantener eh, un, un trabajo tan, tan bueno como el suyo, eh, no, nos, nos hace pensar, eh, o nos tendría que hacer pensar. Entonces es verdad que al final es una decisión un poco que, que nos respecta un poco a, a la conciencia ya de, de cada uno, yo creo. Entonces, es como una pescadilla que, que, se, muerde, que se muerde la cola, eh, en el buen sentido, porque si es verdad que la, la gente se conciencia de que la piratería acaba con el hobby, yo creo que la forma de, de, de combatirlo es precisamente no comprando eh, es, esas, esas piezas o esas figuras eh, que, se han, que se han producido de forma pirata eh, al final es verdad que te estás ahorrando un dinero pero es un dinero en un producto que no es de ninguna calidad eh, las copias es verdad que nosotros siempre insistimos que es una de nuestras que es una <risa> hola 
Leonel, muchas gracias. <risa> eh, es, es una de las, de las cosas que nosotros hemos apostado siempre por la calidad. Entonces, eh, nos afecta mucho la piratería también, pero confiamos en que la gente que eh, nos conocéis y conocéis también la calidad por la que apostamos, no os vais a conformar con, con, con la calidad que os vayan a poder ofrecer en una copia pirata por, ¿por, qué? por 10, 15 euros menos, 20 euros menos. Eh, al final yo creo que mm, es como todo, tú cuando compras algo eh, prefieres la calidad a, a, a tener que tirarlo a la basura porque te des cuenta en el caso, vamos a ver, imagínate que te has comprado un móvil que no funciona, pues lo tienes que tirar al final y dices, bueno, para lo poco que me he gastado, bueno, pero es dinero que estás tirando a la basura. Y con las figuras, tú piensas que al final vas a estar con una figura echándole, ¿qué te digo yo?, eh, 40 horas, 60 horas, que eso traducido en meses, a lo mejor una figura la puedes disfrutar durante dos meses pintándola a ratitos. Entonces, yo creo que hay que verlo un poco más, eh, el tema de las figuras, no como que una figura es muy cara, no os podéis imaginar el trabajo que lleva el poder eh, lanzar estas cosas para vosotros, es un trabajo que engloba desde el concept art, desde la escultura, desde la producción, desde la pintura, desde toda la logística que conlleva el packaging, eh, la atención al cliente. Nosotros somos un montón de personas y, 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 y la verdad es que eh, no te creas que nos sobra gente para poder lanzar las figuras. Entonces es, es como todo, es un producto que al final eh, el, el precio que tiene es un precio muy ajustado eh, y créeme, para lo laborioso que es su fabricación. Y lo que te decía es que yo creo que es una concienciación que nos tenemos que hacer todos, que si al final estás tres meses, dos meses pintando una figura, la estás disfrutando, oye, eh, si te ha costado la figura 40 euros, 50, divide esos tres meses, eh, divide esos tres meses entre los 40 o los 50 euros que te ha costado. Te ha salido más barato que si hubieras estado yendo todos esos ratos, por ejemplo, al cine o a ver el fútbol o, o lo que sea. Entonces, eh, está claro que, que es una, una valoración que, que tenemos que hacer ya cada uno y de saber lo que preferimos. Ahora, que si la gente lo que prefiere es en plan de, mira, yo prefiero tener un saco de figuras, aunque no las vaya a pintar ni a jugar con ellas, pero que me hayan costado tres perras, pues... Eh, eso, esas personas tienen que saber que, vale, lo pueden hacer, pero lo pueden hacer ahora. Eh, si siguen así, o si sigue mucha gente así, eh, al final no, les va a costar encontrar miniaturas. Entonces, eh, nosotros de momento, gracias también a, a, vuestro, a vuestro apoyo eh, y a la forma que tenemos de presentaros los proyectos que es el Kickstarter, la verdad es que afortunadamente eh, nos aseguramos de que vosotros podáis obtener el producto de la calidad que nosotros queremos y vosotros también nos aseguráis esa calidad al, al, al colaborar con nosotros en los Kickstarter. Entonces, eh, esa yo creo que es una buena forma de luchar contra, contra estas cosas. Y el resto, insisto, eh, es conciencia individual de cada uno. Si nos gusta el hobby hay que intentar mantenerlo. Eh, ¿Qué tal, Sergio? Buenas tardes. Me, me, me has pillado en modo profundo. <risa> eh, efectivamente, Rui. Eh, yo la verdad es que mmm, nos ha pasado a todos de estar con una figura y encontrarle defectos, encontrarle burbujas, encontrarle una línea de molde que no la puedes ni rebabar, eh, en ver cosas que están aplastadas, por no decir rotas, o, o que puedan faltar cachos de piezas... Entonces, al final, eh, yo, yo creo que eso ya es decisión de cada uno, insisto, pero yo prefiero eh, las cosas que sean de calidad. Yo si me voy a... a por ejemplo, me gusta tocar la guitarra. He estado toda mi vida tocando una guitarra, pues que es verdad que no, no era ni buena, pero tampoco me costó mucho. Pero no quiero decir que la, la guitarra sea pirata. Pero cuando ya he encontrado que eso es una cosa que me gusta, o sea, no me voy a comprar de primeras la, la guitarra más, más cara que encuentre, pero cuando ya llevo tantos años tocándola y sé que me gusta, pues ahí ya es que no me ha importado invertir en, en otra, que es de mejor calidad. No se me ocurre el estar intentando ahorrar en estas cosas cuando la voy a disfrutar tanto tiempo, tanto tiempo. 
Así que eh, yo, chicos, la verdad es que es un poco mi reflexión personal. No sé qué pensaréis vosotros sobre esto. De todas formas, eh, bueno, yo os quiero agradecer otra, otra, otro día más vuestro, vuestro apoyo. Eh, de hecho, el hecho de que estéis en, en la campaña eh, hace que realmente eh, lo que estaba hablando, estoy hablando de esto con vosotros porque sé también un poco en el punto en el que estáis, si estáis en la campaña con nosotros dándonos apoyo y además eh, estáis asegurando que es que podamos estar haciendo más materiales de estos para vosotros en, en un futuro cercano. O sea que muchas gracias por vuestro apoyo una vez más. Eh, Ruby, la verdad es que me ha gustado mucho esa frase. <ríe> eh, es, es arte, no, no es un atlaste de resina. <ríe> Efectivamente, hay que, hay que verlo así. Ok, guys, so I'll continue with. I'll continue. I, <ríe> I'm about to, to start the, the painting. <ríe> The, the painting live streaming, okay, so I'll make some work on, on, on the metal and for this kind of metal I'll, I'm thinking in the color scheme of the miniature, okay, and uh, because the, the autumn scheme, I think uh, many metals could fit in, in this color scheme, but I'm thinking in, in iron or steel, something like that, reflecting all the surrounding colors. I could think about in gold or maybe in copper. But uh, from all of these choices, I think maybe is one option. Uh, the, the copper one could be nice because the copper is an orange metal, okay, something like that. And this is uh, what I need for this color scheme, orange. Orange is the color of the autumn and my uh, color, um, uh, my, my color comodin? Uh, which, which, uh, ¿Cómo se dice comodín en inglés? ¿Lo sabe alguien? <laughs> Mira, esa, esa ahí me he, quedado, me he quedado sin saberlo. This is my, my breath and butter color for, for this color scheme, okay? So I will using some orange color in for simulate some copper. Um, I will add some brownish color, okay? Some of these. I need to make a darker wild card. Ah. Gracias, Ruby. Eh, pues mira, me está, eh, no sé si es un déjà vu, pero es verdad que hubo un día que también pregunté lo mismo y alguien me respondió lo mismo, wild card. Ok, perfect. So, as a explanation, the orange color is my wild, wild card color for this color scheme. <laughs> Thank you, Ruby. Okay, uh, I'm preparing my palette. This color is dry. Okay, the summer is, is here, I think. Uh, eh, pues sí, Isra, la verdad es que... Mm, efectivamente tú hablas como que esas copias fueran como, como unas especies de copias de seguridad porque ya no las puedes volver a obtener en el mercado es verdad que hay un montonazo de figuras antiguas que ya no sé si es posible conseguirlas y es una pena lo que pasa es que ahora también es verdad que hay una oferta en el mercado que, que la verdad es que no creo que tengamos tiempo suficiente para pintarnos todas las minis que salen Así que yo creo que tampoco nos tendría que preocupar las minis que, que tampoco tenemos. Muy bien, Alberto. Perfecto. Claro que estaremos en contacto. Ok, so I will mix my base color for, for the copper. 
metal of the seal I'll make some copper color I need some reddish tone for example this one I'm adding orange of course because this is my my color for this my, my main color my white card <laughs> for this miniature okay but I need to make more reddish in order to approach more to the Cooper uh, color okay so as you can see I'm starting to get a color very similar to the to the one used in in the leaves is is more desaturated of course but this is what I'm looking for some color coherence okay Eh, las de Star Wars, dice Ruby que piensa en las de Star Wars de, de Night Models, por ejemplo, en plan de, bueno, no las puedes conseguir, pero bueno, de todas formas, también minis de Star Wars, eh, yo creo que ahora hay hasta un montón de juegos y tal, que son minis de una escala distinta y tal, bueno, eh, hay muchas opciones y, y más en de Star Wars también, yo creo que, y yo creo que alguna también puedes encontrar por allí, por ahí de segunda mano todavía de Night Models. Okay, so this color is okay for me because it's ready, it's dark, but uh, I want to mention one thing about the shadow side of the seal. Remember, the, the seal is facing down the floor, so it's in shadow. So for my shadows, okay, uh, I'll make a, a quick, uh, a, an easy thought, okay? So my shadows uh, will be colder than the lights, cold shadows, warm lights, for this color scheme. And I will ensure the contrast that I need, and more color uh, contrast. And this is something that I'm always uh, do in my in my painting, okay? And vice versa, if I made a uh, cold uh, lights, I make uh, warm shadows. This is everything that I need to know about this, this part of the seal that will be colder than this one, which is the, the side exposed to the light. Sorry, I was out of the camera. I talking about that this was, this will be my shadow part of the seal that will be cold in colors and this is my more exposed part of the seal that will be warm in, in the colors for those light okay so in order to make this color colder it's very easy to to do because if i'm adding some blue color to this mix okay i'm automatically making this color colder okay i don't mean to make this color blue but adding a little bit of blue, which is the colder color that you could find in your in your palette, I'll make this color colder. And grayer, which is perfectly okay for me. Okay? You could see that the color that I have is changing. So now I could start to apply this color and I already have some similar color in this part, okay? But anyway, I, I will apply this coat over this part. And it's perfect because it's, it's dark, it's a little bit cold, so it's okay for me. Here I need some shadows in this part of the, the side of the shield and it's done. Here in the edge, and for the lights, the opposite. 
I need um, a warm color, light warm color, okay? So, again, I need to make some copper color. I will be using this reddish brown. I will be adding some orange as I did before. And now, see the difference between the lights and the shadows. Okay? Cold, warm. Okay, so it's okay for me. I'll apply this color in the exposed side of the, of the shield. In this way. And uh, I think in the in the edges is very important to to apply some light, and I think these edges are important as well. Uh, some light will be falling to these parts, okay. and these edges needs to be highlighted as well this side of the of the seal i think i could highlight because the position of the seal is something like that will be reflecting some light in these parts in this side okay If I'm out of the camera, just advise me. <laughs> no te preocupes, Ruby. Sí, me encantan estas conversaciones con vosotros. La verdad es que amenizan los lunes, desde luego. <laughs> y tranquilo que, que sí, que sí, que pinto. Creo que puedo pintar y hablar a la vez. Perfilar y hablar ya me cuesta más. Pero, pero hacer este tipo de sketches y, y estas cosas sí que sí que creo que, que puedo hacer. Ok, so here I have my light side of the metal and the, the shadow side. Ok, so I, I'm going to add some lights. Okay, first on the shadow parts of the metal. Uh, for the light is as easy as increase the value a little bit of the previous color that I had. So let me look for. I have two possibilities. I, I need to add to my previous mix. Remember the cold mix for the shadows. Okay. So I need to increase the value of this mix in order to add some light. And for this, I could use just white to add to this mix. This, this will increase the, the, the value. But I prefer uh, to use uh, light colors, very light colors like this, those ones, for example, this one as well. Those colors are different uh, variations okay, in the hue. But at the end, there, mm, all of them are uh, very light colors, very near from the white. Okay, you could see the difference. Of course, the white is the lighter of, of these four colors. Okay, but um, it's enough for me to play with these colors instead of white. Okay, I love to use as well this one, the ivory. <clears throat> this is in white with a little touch, little, little touch of blue and, and yellow. Okay, so in the case of the ivory color, you will see that is almost white. But using this broken white, Will and I'll make sure that I'm not reach to the pure white never. 
on my miniature, okay? So, for example, I will using a, a little touch of this color, ivory, okay? And I will be using as well because I need to make some... Let me add this ivory color to the mix and you will see what happened. Okay? You're starting to see how the color <coughs> is changing, okay? To a lighter value. This is okay, but uh, if you could see, the color is way grayer. This is okay if I'm... Uh, uh, um, uh, by the way, I am I'm obtaining gray uh, without using black. I I mix it a dark color, cold dark color, and when I add white to this color, I obtain gray. So this is a trick that I comment before in other live streaming to you in order to make your own gray tones. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> I'm obtaining, obtaining uh, a grayer tone, but as I said before, I want to paint something uh, similar to the copper, okay? So, the copper is not gray. Uh, I need to make a little bit reddish this gray. So, for that, I'm adding this reddish tone, okay? Adding this grayer tone, this reddish tone to the gray, makes the reddish tone more desaturated and because the blue is inside the, the mix more colder okay so this color will be perfect in order to apply some lights to my copper in in the saddle part let's try it okay first of all i will be painting the the edges this is very important in the metal parts, defining the edges as I am doing. And I will make in, I'm making a texture in order to simulate some chipping on these metal parts. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if you are oh, oh, I'm almost on to the the left. Sorry for that. Um, I don't know if you could see the reddish tone that I'm applying in the saddle part of the silt, but it's a, a different in temperature from this color to this one. Okay? So this is how I separate my saddle parts from the light parts. This is the one of the most important parts in when miniature painting is because you need to make things clear for your eye and making thi things clear for the eye i i mean the, uh, making the light planes and the subtle planes very easy to distinguish for your eye Okay, I'm adding more light to some parts. This way. And of course I need more, more contrast for these metal parts. Okay. Oh, of course, I almost forget this flower. Okay, so this is my first light in this side of the of the 
uh, sealed. So for adding more lights is more or less the same that I already did for this. I'm adding to the, my previous mix more white, more uh, more light color, not white. Okay. And I'm starting to reach to my lighter color in the shadows, okay? This will be this color. And I could use a little bit of this reddish color in order to, to maintain the reddish hue of the copper. Okay? And now I will apply this color again over the previous part but reducing the area where I am applying this color to create high contrast sections like this one for example I'm creating some points, lines in order to simulate some some chipping in these areas a you advance in the in the lining uh, sketch uh, you need to be more precise and reducing the areas where you are working okay something like that Here I'm making some dotting in the edge. It's very useful to simulate some chipping in, in these warm and old seals. See the effect right now when I'm starting to, to highlight the edges is looks like more metallic than before I think and I'm making an, a stronger light in this side okay I'm applying another layer of, of lights and you need to be in some way random when painting reflections uh, because the metal parts are simulated with the paint in this way you can it's not needed to be very mathematical with your painting you need to add here some light in this way I'm making a stronger light in this side in this point okay You could add as many layers as you want, as I'm doing. But here, I don't need to make the light stronger than that. I'm varying the the intensity of the re, of the reflection. So. I need to make something coherent in this side of the of the seal. So I am applying a lot of uh, understand me a lot of mm, reflected light here, and I'm making the same here to keep the coherence in the reflection. Okay. Making some texture in the warm metal and highlighting the edge, of course, because it is, again, I can't say enough, is one of the most important parts of the metal, the definition and the contrast. Okay, I'm highlighting this edge as well. By the way, in the metals, is important to highlight no 
only the upper edge as you could do usually in other parts it's okay if you highlight the lower edge as well in this in every side because one reflection is the main reflection and the other one in the other edge is the secondary reflection is more will looks like more like metal in this way your your parts okay i'm making some definition in this part as well something quick to jump onto the lining of the main part and here a couple of touches do you remember what I'm talking about to make something random that is a couple of lines in order to define this part and just done of course you could apply later some smudging a smooth ring to these parts here as well a little bit of light and for me it's okay this is what I get in my color sketch so I could go further with this one and add an, an, a last light more lighter but only in teeny teeny points okay I'll making a more lighter version of this light it's like a pinky stone very light okay and now this is optional okay I could I'll make some tiny tiny reflections in a couple of points to reinforce the reflection of these parts here is my main part for this kind of reflections and this is definitely the 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 trick that will make this metallic okay and here to make the reflection coherence that I'm talking before I need to apply a little bit of this hard reflection in this way I need to change the direction only a moment to highlight this edge a little bit Some touches in the in some edges. Okay. I don't need to to overdo these kind of things later we could add more work and refinement to this but I think with this sketch is enough okay um, now This is the result for the shadow part. Remember that you could see this piece in the miniature in this way. It's facing down. Okay? So you'll see this part in this way. 
Now I'll move on to the side of the of the metal where the light falls directly. And remember, I need to make a light warm warmer than the light of the saddles. Okay, so I will be using this color for sample, or you could use this one as well. Okay, I'll try with this one because it's a very warm color and light, very light. Okay, for these lights, uh, as same as before, I, I'll using the previous light color, remember, I have used this one, okay? So I'll mix in these two colors together, in this way, and you, you'll get a warm color, okay? because this color is warm, this other is warm as well, so I, the result will be a warm color, is obviously. <laughs> so, I'm adding a little bit of this light color in order to increase the value of these lights. With this color, I think, I could do pretty good contrast onto this metal okay so let's try it and if not I could correct the mix so as I did before for the for the saddle parts I will start for with the edges is so important in this way I'm making dot, dots, little dots in the edges in order to again simulate some chipping. And in this edge I need to to highlight as well. Okay. And I will turn down this side of the of the silt in order to highlight these other edges. Okay. Imagine that you could uh, that you need to paint this this piece attach it to the main <laughs> character. I sometimes do this kind of things to separate the, the hard pieces like this one in order to paint separately from the main character to make things easier for me. Okay, I'm making some reflections in random parts, as you could see, and the contrast is very nice. I think too much uh, yellow in the in this color, maybe, but later I cook red, adding more white or red to this mix. Okay. Sorry because sometimes it's hard to show you sadly where I'm painting. With these small pieces is it's easy to get out of focus because I'm always turning the piece to find the most comfortable position for painting.
Okay, so this is my first sketch for these reflections of the light parts. I could make some refinement. Okay, and you could see the difference between the subtle part and the light part. Okay, Oy. okay, I'm always out of the camera. ¿Qué tal, Carlos? Bienvenido. You could see the difference between cold, warm, cold warm okay it's not finished <laughs> i need to make more reflections here eh, ricardo taiza dice qué colores usas para hacer una piel enana cálida o qué colores se pueden usar eh, pues mira es que las pieles ricardo depende muchísimo de de la ambientación en la que quieras ubicar al personaje dices cálida bueno pues es verdad que eh, se presupone que está pues bajo un día soleado entonces mi consejo es eh, que utilices para hacer esas pieles un color cálido para las luces como puede ser por ejemplo este mismo uno cree bastante amarillito y claro y para las sombras ya empiezas a jugar con tonos un poquito más rojizos como por ejemplo pueda ser este serían unos colores un poco similares a los que estoy usando aquí en el escudo vale Podría ser esto una sombra y luego también podrías añadirle en algunos puntos más, más oscuros de sombra algún color un poco más frío, un toquecito de, de azul para que te enfríe este color rojo en las sombras más, más profundas. Y así haces el mismo efecto del que estoy hablando, de las luces cálidas, las sombras frías. De todas formas, ya sé que la explicación es, es muy rápida, porque no es el, el motivo del, del tutorial de, de hoy, del, del vídeo del streaming, pero en, en nuestra página de, de Facebook, de Big Child, puedes encontrar multitud de, de ejemplos de nosotros pintando pieles, así que eh, échale un ojillo porque seguro que encuentras por ahí algo mucho más detallado. Eh, ok, so I'm mixing another color for the the lights almost the the most the final lights for the this part okay so i'll making a ready pinky something like that color for this part of the metal okay so as i said before first with the edges i'm in the camera uh, Yeah, I think first with the edges and a couple of touches in order to simulate those kind of reflections. Okay, this edge as well needs some light. So, and now you could see, as I said and did before, where when I'm adding this high contrast color this part start to looks like more metallic part so remember the the trick for the non-metallic parts is the contrast as well you need to keep in mind other aspects of the paint like the temperature the color of the metal and so on but if you don't have any contrast on your metallic part you don't have the sense of this will be painted like metal could be good could be a, a piece of cloth but won't be metal okay so i will be adding here the highlight of the edges as well some chipping i love this kind of chipping textures as you could see and more reflections 
here and um, why not here try to be as random as you can with the metal and don't worry uh, I'm sketching I'm not smothering anything so if you don't like some reflections you could correct it don't be afraid to make your corrections on the on the spot when you are painting okay this is an sketch part i think uh, sometimes it's hard to to change your mind in in this way but give it a try to make something sketchy and later try to refine and make more more smooth you will paint in more freely and more um, more freely I don't know the word in, in English more self self-esteem <laughs> I think is is the word some reflections here okay and now here as well needs some reflection some chipping And here as well okay so as I said before uh, you could correct I think there's too much light here so if I took my previous color I could correct and add some shadows here for example in this way see how easy I'm fixing the lights and I could fix here as well and it's done okay I will add a final light here and why not a little bit here in the edges I need to now highlight again because fixing the previous part I erase the highlight of the edge but it's okay right now some lights here and there and is almost done of course I need to refine but now is more metallic than before I could make now some additions playing with the previous colors okay I could add here some reflection as well and now comes the refinement okay is for refine this kind of of uh, sketches uh, the only thing that you need is dilute your previous mixes a little bit more than before okay I have this mix from before okay so I will add more water like this okay I think it's enough and with this dilution you need to try this dilution 
this dilution is called glazes, okay? It's very useful to paint with glazes in this step. So, you will know that this dilution is enough if you paint with the paint and you could start to paint over the letters but you still will be sewing was underneath okay so as you could see you could read the letters is a good dilution okay this is not good if I paint with almost water like this see the difference I need to apply several layers in order to to start to see the color so this is a good point this is something useful in some cases if you need to make something very 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 uh, smooth and fine for a very concrete part I paint some carnations in the skins of the faces in this way but the usual dilution is the first of, of, of the two that I saw you and with this dilution you could refine your gradients in this way I'm painting with the a more darker color for these parts and I could make the same with the other hues that I already use for these parts okay with the pinky stone in this way And this is how you could refine your gradients very quick and easy. Of course, in other leaf streaming, I show you how to make it with the eyebrows, with the eye blending technique, the, which is okay as well. But I want to show you different ways to make pretty the same. I think you could make the eye blending which is way faster in, in in most of the cases but sometimes you could make with glazes with your brass like I'm doing right now so this is another weapon in your arsenal okay start to see how the metal flows <laughs> and the colors, the contrast, everything is important when it's about to to paint metals, okay? But remember once again, contrast is your priority when painting these parts. I'm reinforcing, reinforcing a little bit the lights and of course you could make a very strong point of light in the very end of this process something like that okay So this is the result for this side and I will need to make something similar in this side but I will make it something quick for you but I think that I am running out of time but you could get the idea 
okay it's pretty the same I'm using some of the previous colors but more diluted than before in order to make these kind of glazes I must to, to say that this technique of the glazing is very funny but need some practice so uh, don't 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 expect that at the first you could get uh, decent results but keep going because uh, if you master this technique your painting skills will be um, overpowered i think because in this way you could paint almost everything And as you could see, it's very quick to to make the smoothing of the gradients with the brass. <clears throat> I must to say that I'm uh, I'm uh, enjoying this process because you are going uh, fast but uh, uh, step by step. So it's hard to to make something. Uh, very wrong for you so if you if you are seeing that the result that you are achieving is not okay for you just stop change your color and try another one because you are painting in glazes in in thin layers so it's very very difficult to to make one layer one brush stroke that you said oh my god I I have ruined my my previous work so this is mm, one uh, of the safest way to paint. Okay, so I did very quickly, but I think that you get the idea. I have to smooth a little bit the, the gradients. And of course, now, I lose some light in some points, but it's very easy to recover this light. So again, you could return to your previous mixes and apply little touches of light, for example here. and increase the contrast of your metallic parts to look more metallic ok guys, I hope that you are enjoying this series from Echoes of Camelot I'm a little bit uh, sad because this Friday the campaign reached to the end so this is my last streaming for this series but I think in the future we could make some more stuff from those beautiful miniatures because uh, we love them, you love them, so everything is okay to continue with this kind of miniatures that we really enjoy uh, the campaign with you, so uh, as a reminder, uh, stay tuned for, for the last uh, updates because uh, there will be more surprises until the end of the campaign so stay tuned to the updates or in the big child social medias because you'll see some refreshing news for this hot summer <laughs> I think you will like it.
Okay, guys. So, as you could imagine, if you develop, sorry, if you develop this technique over and over, uh, you will get a very smooth and refined result onto the different parts of the miniature, okay? Let's try these seals onto the the miniature and see how it looks like now with these parts painted okay I, I like it of course this is something that I need to paint everything around these parts in order to advance with the results okay but you could get the idea I'm not sure if you are seeing this side of the of the silt I think it's beautiful the contrast of the uh, cold light uh, cold shadows in this side and the the warm light on this part i'm adding more warm lights in this side in this side and in every part exposed to the to the sun or the the main light better said so i think this kind of contrast and tricks with the color are very nice and very easy to 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 to, to make if you if you have the, the the information so i hope that uh, this is something uh, that you like it and understand with the with the explication <laughs> don't worry sasa we will make in more videos for you uh, so guys thank you once again to to be with us in in this live streaming and supporting us in in the campaign so uh, last thing that i need to to comment to you is that don't forget to um, to stay tuned because uh, in wednesday uh, there will be another painting live streaming with David Arroba, you could might because it's the usual way that we we make this live streaming and on Friday will be Jaime de Garnica with you so uh, stay safe, stay healthy and stay painty <laughs> bye bye my friends <laughs>